So my name is Amy June, and you are in Markdown in Minutes. And there is a QR code there if you want to follow along. There's a link to my slide deck. And um, the only reason I link to the slide deck really is because there's some resources at the end. And then um, I have a GitLab repository, and it's an easier way to get to the GitLab rep repository from the slide deck. So some housekeeping, you know, we're in Hopin. Um, I don't think captions are enabled. Um, so I'm going to do a little trick right now and enable captions. And I'm going to show you all how to do it because it's pretty cool. On Google Slides, if you like hover over this, and you do captions, you can like select your text size, which usually I put at large. And then um, text size large, and I put the position at the top, and then you toggle them on, and now I have captions at the top. And the reason I put them at the top is because when the session is recorded, um, the YouTube now will put captions at the bottom. And the captions that I'm displaying up above are now open captions, which means you can't turn them on and off. So I put them at the top so they don't like clash with the with the YouTube um, captions. There are images in my slide deck, but most of them are decorative, so I won't be explaining them um, for brevity. And the views and opinions expressed by me here today are my own, Amy June, and are not connected to my company. Um, the WordPress community or um, WordCamp Montreal. So with that, um, some of you may know me. I'm Amy June. I work in the WordCamp community um, doing some diversity and, and inclusion stuff, um, but mostly I'm in the Drupal community. I work at the Linux Foundation. I help build exams and certifications for the Linux um, Foundation. Uh, for emerging technologies. And then there's my LinkedIn information and I, you can find me on Mastodon. This is Spot. <clears throat> He's really cute. He's my cat. And I like to blame any typos on him. So him running across the keyboard, um, but he really is a good cat and he loves everyone. So that's Spot. Um, if you want to follow along when I do the demo, if you don't have a editor, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do trydiscord.org and um, open a free account and open a little window. But you don't really need um, to necessarily uh, type out what I do because I'm going to do a demo where I show the markdown and then I show the rendered stuff. So um, don't feel obligated to open an account on Discord. So why markdown? Plain text files, you know, the .txt uh, files don't really allow for formatting, like headings or subheadings or even things like bolding, italics, underlining lists. Um, and when you have a markdown file, a .md file, it formats it for you. So really a markdown file is kind of like a cross between a text file and a markup language like HTML. But unlike HTML, they are very human readable. And Markdown is simple, it's intuitive, and it's portable um, and can be converted to HTML or PDF or other formats using various tools and platforms. And what I mean by portable is you can take it from one instance to another and not worry about um, it not working. Um, you can be converted to HTML, which is nice and it's accessible. It can be converted to PDF, but in this day and age, we should not be using PDFs, but that's a whole nother talk on accessibility. Um, so think of using Markdown like using an editor without the WYSIWYG buttons. You can add formatting. Um, it's used from project to project. Um, and then when I say that Markdown is more accessible. What I mean is for people who maybe, you know, have a palsy or don't have a mouse, they do not have to do the extra effort of like highlighting text and then pushing a WYSIWYG button. It's just a couple of keystrokes on their keyboard. So it's accessible um, in the programming sense too. Um, this is a slide left over from a Drupal deck, but um, if you use CK Editor 5, uh, the plugins, um, even in WordPress, uh, Markdown is now in CK Editor 5. So that's like a really nice uh, bonus. <clears throat> and to iterate, 
You can use Markdown on any platform or operating systems since there are dozens of like really good Markdown editors for all platforms. This includes Linux, uh, if you use a Mac, if you use Windows, <clears throat> or if you're just like um, entering uh, content on the web through your, through your uh, WordPress editor. And it's a really great tool for non-programming types and technical writers to write text without having to re rely on knowing HTML. And Markdown kind of gets rid of all the distractions of a formatting toolbar, you know, because you don't have to do those mouse clicks anymore. You can focus on your writing without le lifting your fingers off the keyboard. It really gives you more control over your editor's experience. And if you um, contribute to technical writing or maybe a technical publication, editors actually prefer you to submit your stuff in Markdown because when you submit your stuff in a Google Doc, you know, when you copy and paste it, you get all those weird spans and stuff. And then if you copy and paste and without formatting, then you lose all the formatting. So think about that when you're, you know, submitting an article to like opensource.net or um, or any, any sort of uh, medium like that. So applying the basics to Markdown, um, we start with an MD file, like I said, um, not a text file, because the MD file lets your editor know that you're going to render it in Markdown. And then you really kind of have to know your flavor of Markdown. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to take a drink. So when I say know your flavor, to really help like wrap your head around what um, the concept of markdown flavors are, it might help to think of them as like language dialects. Um, GitHub has its own markdown, GitLab has some additional things, and then depending on your editor, you know, some things don't cross over. And everyone has their own favorite markdown editor. My best advice um, is to take your time and find out which one works for you. And markdown syntax, again, is designed to to, to be readable and unobtrusive. So the text in the markdown files can be read even if it's rendered. And we'll, we'll look at that more when I open uh, the GitLab stuff. So um, there are all, there's a whole bunch of markdown editors and I'm an open source fan. So I have some listed here. My favorite markdown editor is VS Codium, which is a little different than VS Code because VS Code actually isn't open source, it tracks you. So um, VS Codium is my favorite one because you can have, you can be writing on one side and have a window that renders it um, on the other side. So it makes it really easy like to see what it's going to look like. And then there's some not so cool editors, meaning that they are um, not open source. Obsidian actually is my favorite Markdown editor, but I can't say that because it's not open source. Obsidian is like super cool. If you haven't seen it, please explore it. It's very dynamic. You can like open files from, you know, um, uh, in, in very dynamic ways. But again, that's another talk, but um, not so cool editors. And what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna like, I'm gonna close this slide deck in a second and we're gonna go into a GitLab instance and we're gonna like look at um, how to do some inline formatting like bold and italics and strikes through. We're going to learn how to make our um, file accessible by adding headings. We're going to look at how to create different kinds of lists, block quotes, horizontal rules. And then a couple of these things are um, specific to GitLab. So we'll do flow charts and diagrams and task lists and tables, and they are super cool. Um, and before I close my deck, I just want to remind everyone, um, in light of a prominent community sponsor um, in the WordPress community, um, their decision to host um, hate groups, I want to remind people just to be mindful of your hosting platform's accessible use policy and make sure that the platform prohibits um, uh, self-hosting from designated hate groups um, and uh, when there's adequate evidence that's been provided for such a designation. But anyway, we will mosey to the demo. Um, there's a QR code and a bit.ly link here. Oh no, this is a GitLab link. So gitlab.com Volkswagen Chick. And again, you don't have to go there, but it's Volkswagen Chick and it's markdown hyphen in hyphen minutes. Um, but you can just watch my screen and you'll be perfectly fine. So with that, I will um, stop presenting and go to my GitLab instance. Again, it's, you know, um, 
GitLab Volkswagen Chick Markdown in minutes. And what this is, is this is a GitLab repository that, um, that I've created specifically for this talk. Um, it's a work in progress. Um, I do change it from time to time. Um, we have, like, this is the readme file when you first, like, if you're not familiar with how GitHub or GitLab works, um, the first thing you do is create a readme. And so my readme, as you see here, is written in Markdown. And you sort of go to the readme automatically by default. So this is written in Markdown. You can see, like, I have a, a title. I have some horizontal rules. I have a list. I have uh, links. Um, and this is the this is the default uh, template for a Drupal README, like for their contributed modules. And I have some open, so um, all of these are separate files, just to like kind of you know separate things out. The first thing we'll look at is inline formatting examples. So we're going to look at how to format italics, bolds, strike throughs, and block quotes. And it looks like there's a little mistake here, but um, we'll forgive. We'll forgive me for that. Oh, it's Spotty's fault because he does. He does. He does the programming in GitLab too. So if you look here, you know I have italics. Um, to to add italics in a Markdown file, um, you add one asterisk or underscore before or after the word or phrase. So if we like toggle over to the code, we can see that there's an asterisk on either side, or there's an underscore. So add one asterisk or underscore before or after the word or phrase with no space between the word or character. So we'll toggle back and see that the, both of those render the same in their italics. <clears throat> the next one is bold, and we're going to edit this, I think, because that's not the way it's supposed to look. You're going to add two asterisks or underscores before or after the word or phrase with no space. So for italics, we did one, but for bold, we do two. So if we toggle over, there's a space right there. So this is a good troubleshooting exercise, actually. So again, it's the same as italic, but with two asterisks or two underscores before and after the phrase with no space between the word or character. So we see here that I have a space. So if we look back, that didn't render com correctly. So we'll just go in there and edit that real quick. Oops, no. Not that. Okay, we're gonna edit in a single file. And we'll go in there and we'll remove that space. And then when we hit save, we can see that now it rendered correctly. So some of these things, like if you think like, um, like if it doesn't get right, it's e either because you added an extra space or maybe um, you, you, you um, didn't have a space. Strike through is two tildes before and after a word or phrase with no space in between. So we have the strike through. So if we toggle to the code, you can see that I have two tildes. The tilde is above the back tick um, on on American keyboard in the on the left hand side. So we have a strike through two tildes before and after. And then we might as well look at block qu quotes right now. Um, the code. So if you want to create a block quote, you add a caret in front of the paragraph. Uh, 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 what is that? A, a greater than sign. So I have I love Drupal with a character and a space. So if we go back to the rendered file, we can see that I created a block quote with just adding that character. So we'll look just one more time. Italics, we have the, the one asterisk before and after. For bold, we have two asterisks before and after. Strike through, we have two tildes before and after. And then a block quote, we have that caret. So the next kind of cool thing about um, Markdown is you can create headings. And we all know, or should know, that we use headings for accessibility and not for formatting. So what this does is it breaks up your page and and makes it um, accessible to screen readers or people who scan or people who use assistive technology. So again, headings are for um, are not for styling; they're for like semantic markup. So to create a heading, you add hash tags in front of the word or phrase. So we have like a heading one, a heading two, a heading three, a heading four, and a heading five. So we add hashtags. So if we look at the code. Each heading, heading one, has one hashtag. 
heading two has two hashtags and heading five has five hashtags. Alternatively, in GitHub, you can create a heading. These look completely the same, heading one and heading two. We'll look at the code. You can do heading one, you know, this is my heading. And now what I did was I put equal signs all the way across. And then to create a heading two, you do hyphens all the way across. But you only can do up to one or up to two headings. So if you need, like, you know, if you're doing an, a longer article or a readme or technical documentation and you need um, to break it down more, um, the hashtags are the way to go. But if you just have one or two, you can do it this way. Horizontal rules are kind of cool. Here we have the code. It's simply three dashed lines. So if we go to the code or to the rendered file and we look at it, you can see I have three dashed lines and it created this horizontal rule across the bottom. Code formatting. So this is really important for accessibility. Sometimes what I'll see is I'll be looking at an article um, and uh, there'll be a image of code rather than um, than uh, actual code block. And what that does is, like, say you're you know you have this 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 code that you want to share. Well, the image is inaccessible; people cannot copy and paste that. So they would have to like go into your alternative text, hopefully you used alternative text, you know, find it and copy it from there. But if you create the code in the text itself, people can just simply copy and paste and not have to worry about it. And there's two ways to do code formatting. There's what we call inline code where you have, um, maybe you have code like in line with your, with your sentences. And there's also code blocks. Um, and depending on what markdown editor you use, the code block renders a little bit differently. Sometimes I've seen it like in this square, and sometimes I've seen it shaded in like the inline, but in a, in a big block. So if we look at the code, <clears throat> to denote inline code, you do a back, <clears throat> excuse me, a back tick before and after without a space, and then do a code block you start with three back ticks on one line, write what you want, and then start a new line and do three back ticks. So again, if we look at it, you know, this is one back tick before, one back tick after. And then for code block, we have three back ticks before, new line, your code, and then a new line and three back ticks. Again, let's look at it. Rendered, you can see it's formatted two different ways, um, inline blo block and then a code block. The next thing that is kind of cool are links. You know, we all love links um, and we need to make sure that they're formatted right. And in Markdown, what's nice is it's a couple of uh, uh, just keystrokes rather than like copy and pasting or copy and highlighting and then hitting that, that editor button. <clears throat> so to do that, and it's really hard to see because this is rendered, but the link text for like a pretty straightforward link, um, you enclose it with square brackets and then you put the link in parentheses. So if we see here, we can see this says link text, it's underlined when hovered. Here's Drupal Camp Asheville, it's underlined and hovered. And if we go and we look at uh, the code, I have link text that we saw, remember that was highlighted um, or under, uh, underlined when we hovered and it was uh, a hyperlink. So we put the link text in parentheses and then we put the URL in parentheses, or sorry, the link text in brackets, no space, and then the link URL in parentheses. So remember that said link text and then we had one at the below it that said Drupal Camp Asheville. So again, we'll look back at it. It's the same thing. You put the, the link text that you want in the square brackets, and then you put the URL itself in parentheses. Um, to add a title to a link, what does that mean? So if I hover over this Drupal Camp Asheville, you can see that now I have a, a, a title. You know, when I hover over it, it says Drupal Camp Asheville's homepage. So how did I do that? Well, in Markdown, we'll look at the code. Here's my Drupal Camp Asheville. Here's my parentheses, pretty much the same as what we saw before, 
But what we do is in that parentheses, we have a space and then in quotes, we have what we want our title to be. So again, we have our link text in square brackets. We have our URL immediately file following in parentheses. And then if you want to add title text, you have a space and then the quotes and it comes out Drupal Camp Asheville. <clears throat> While we're here and looking at code, um, if you have a relative link, say like you're linking within a repository or you're linking within the same website and you have that beginning hash, um, you can do the same thing where you put the, the link text in brackets. And then what you can do is you can shorten that URL and just have uh, the last part of it. So to make it more understandable, let's look at it. Here's a relative link within a repository. We did the same thing, the link text in brackets, the URL in, um, in quotes, but we didn't have to put the whole thing before it. So you can see I have blob main lists because it's in this repository. When I go and click on it, what's gonna happen is when I go back to lists, I'm gonna open that in a new tab so you can see it goes back to the original repository. Kind of cool. Um, email addresses, you can render really quickly. You, um, it's real straightforward. You just put the, the information you want in brackets. So here we have you know, um, a website and then we have an email address. So if we look at that in, um, in the code, all we did was we put it in brackets. And then if we look at it rendered again, it's, you know, it just quickly turns a URL into a link. So you don't have to, um, like if if you don't need it to like, like say Drupal Camp uh, Montreal, or sorry, WordCamp Montreal or whatever, you can just do the URL and enclose that in brackets. Um, which one do I wanna do next? Let's do lists next, cause that's a pretty common thing in uh, when we're writing technical documentation. So there's ordered lists and unordered list. An ordered list is numbered where an, un, I'm sorry, an ordered list is numbered and an unordered, unordered list is bullet points. So to create an ordered list, you add line items with numbers followed by periods and the numbers do not have to be sequential. So if we look at it here, I have number one, number two, number three, number four, and then here, it kind of says the same thing, right? Number one, number two, number three, number four. But what's cool is if you look at the source code, I didn't have to number all of them. I didn't have to, like, say your, your documentation is super long and you're in item 54 and you can't remember what number you're on. You can just do ones all the way down and it renders the same. So again, one, two, three, four, or one, 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 look at the rendered stuff it's the same. So pretty, pretty nifty shortcut. <clears throat> Bullet lists, um, these all kind of look the same. Um, to create an unordered list, you add a dash, an asterisk, or a plus sign in front of the line items. So these all look the same, but if we go and we look at the code, we can see that I did it a few different ways. I did a hyphen here, an asterisk here and a plus sign. And they render the same, they're the same HTML, but maybe maybe you have a favorite keystroke and it's easier for you to hit an asterisk than it is to hit a hyphen. So again, it doesn't matter how you do it. You just do a dash, an asterisk or a plus sign with a space. And then again, for iteration, when we look at it, we have our bulleted lists. So what's kind of cool with Markdown is you can combine the two. You can have an unordered list within an ordered list. So this is it rendered. We have our list items, right? And then we have some bullets in here. So how did I do that? Look at the code. We went down here. We did our little trick, remember, from up here where we didn't have to remember the numbers. So we numbered all of them. And then we did like a hanging indent where we spaces, not tabs, we spaced to right underneath where the list started. And then we did the same thing for our um, unordered list. So we have an ordered list and then to put a bullet point in an, in an ordered list, we spaced all the way, made a hanging indent 
and did our bullets. So again, what's it look like? It is our ordered list and then we indented four spaces because that was what was underneath and then we have our bulleted list. So that's really cool. Um, tasks lists are nice. Let's look at task lists. There's tables, there's footnotes and flow charts. Yeah, let's look at task lists first. Um, you add bullets and then a set of brackets with a space in between. And to complete a task list, task list, list you just simply, you know, uh, do an X. And then to strike out a task, you add a tilde. So you see here, we have a completed task with a check mark, check mark, and then we have a strike through. So what does that look like? So we go back and we have a bulleted list, and then we have those brackets. So the completed task we saw was a check, has an X. To strike out your task, you have the tilde. And then to have an incomplete task, you have an empty bracket. So to look at that one more time, rendered, we have a task list. And the nice thing about task lists is it keeps the history. So even though like the task is no longer applicable, it, when you strike it through, people can still see that in the history. Um, again, you know, it just depends on how you fill in that space before it. A completed task is a X, a strike through is, um, is a tilde. And then we have drop downs which maybe I shouldn't teach people because they're not accessible by nature, but they're really kind of cool. So I have this drop down here. What is the best Drupal camp in the world? But, and I click on it and then I have the answers right there. So if we look at the code, we have details, we have a summary, which is our question. And then we, you know, you know, close the summary and then we have our answers, answer one, answer two, answer three, and then we closed out that details. So that details and the summary is what pulls up that, that, uh, that button. So if we look at it rendered again, you know, there's a drop down, and then you can, you know, show and hide your answers, not accessible, but kind of cool. Um, the next one, let's do flow charts. So I am not a designer. My perfectly themed website is Craigslist. Um, so when someone asks me to do a flow chart and I have to like open Figma or draw something, it's like super not convenient for me because it takes me like three hours to make a flow chart. But if you work in GitLab, look how cool this is. Um, and I think that you can do this in GitHub in the last month that they, they have this tooling too. But I have my flowchart, A to B, B to C, C to D, and then we have A goes to D, but B also goes to D and D goes to C. So what does that look like as far as code goes? So you have to call up a library, which is the mermaid library. So we did three back ticks and called the mermaid library. We have a command called graph TD, which is table data. We have a colon, and then I have a map of where I want everything to go. So I have A to B, B to C, C to D, B to C. And then the second one, I called that library again, called graph table data, and then with a colon or semicolon, and I called my A to D, B to D, D to C. So let's look at that again. We have A goes to, to D, B also goes to D, and then D goes directly to C. And then just to kind of like, like reinforce how straightforward it is, I'm going to make an edit so we can see that. So um, let's add something right here. So we're going to do also um, D, we're going to call it, and we're going to say go to um, E. And then we're going to close it with a semicolon. We're going to save it. And now we have D going to both of those places. Again, let's just look at the code and see how straightforward it is. You just call where you want it to go. And you can also like, okay, let's do this again. Um, you don't have to use characters. You can do words. Like I want this to say um, WordPress. 
and I hit save. So you have, you know, you can put like actual words in there. So say you're creating an organizational chart or, um, you know, uh, a workflow chart. You can, you know, you don't have to use those characters. You can use words and that kind of stuff. There is a way to embed pictures in there, but this is a beginner talk, but just know that that capability is there. You can also insert images um, in your flow charts. Tables, again, like to create tables sometimes in HTML, it's just super confusing, but you can do it in Markdown, who knew? So I have a couple of tables here. Um, if we look at them, you know, you can see that there's some headings. You know, it's uh, depending on your screen, uh, the headings might like look a little bit um, uh, shaded in for formatting. And then we have our table data. So how did I create that? We'll look at the code. So you have the pipe symbol, which is underneath your delete key um, on an American keyboard. So I have everything in a pipe. So I have my, I'm calling out my headings. I'm saying that tables that are left aligned. So I have a table that's left aligned. So how did I do that? I gave it directions. I put a colon, some spaces. I did my pipe and then a colon and some spaces and it's on the left. So I have column one, column two. And if we look back, we can see that all of these tables are left aligned. Look at the code again to do it right aligned the difference simply is moving that colon from the left to the right cool and then guess what when you want them centered you do the colon on both sides so we called out you know colons on both sides and we centered so looking again just to 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 have some muscle memory we have a table that's left aligned with the colon on the left hand side then we have a table that's right aligned <clears throat> with the colon on the right side. And then we have center aligned with, we have the colons on both sides. And then also you can do it a combination of both. You just have to call it. So here we can see that this first column is left aligned. The, the middle one is centered and the last one is right. And then also you can leave them blank but um, for accessibility, that's not a good idea because as a screen reader or an assistive technology device goes through this, uh, the person may not know that this is an empty table. So you can do it, but I don't recommend it. And like we can see here that I bolded the text. Um, again, like all the combinations that we've learned before. So we'll look at the source code. We see that, you know, this first one was um, uh, left aligned and then I did a center aligned where I have the colons on both sides and then the right aligned on the other one. And then to have that empty table data, I simply just have a space in between the pipes. Um, I bolded the text. Remember, we learned that you can do um, two asterisks before and two asterisks after or two underscores after, before and after, and we bolded. So again, looking at the rendered, we have that where all of the table data is is specific to the column left center and right and then we have bolded text within our table and then we have empty spaces again empty spaces are simply leaving that uh, space between the pipes and i usually stop there because this is like you know marked down in minutes but i have a few extra minutes at at this word camp so i uh, want to show footnotes um, there's a lot of documentation on footnotes. Um, if we go back to like the dialect thing, you know, every flavor of Markdown has a different dialect. So this one um, was specific to, I think, like common mark. So it won't always work in GitHub or maybe in your text editor, but it works in GitLab. So I have the documentation there just so people can look at it because it is a little bit more advanced concept and you can do footnotes in different ways. So you know, I'm, if I'm writing uh, a wiki or read me, um, you can see here that I have the footnotes here. I have the one and the two. And if I had a big block of text, this would be the first footnote, number one, and this would be the second footnote, number two. Um, so what does that look like in code? Pretty straightforward. You know, we have that first paragraph and we wanted um, the footnote. So we have uh, in brackets, uh, the up arrow with one 
And then when we did that second footnote, we did the brackets with the up arrow too. And then at the bottom, we defined it the same way, making sure that our editor knows that this is number one and this is number two. So again, if we look at it, we have one and two. And what this does is it takes you back to the, when you go through, scroll down, this will take you back to the top of the, where the footnote is. Um, and, and that renders a little differently depending on, 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 on what flavor of markdown you use as well. So just to kind of like go over things again, we'll look at that first repository, that README. Um, we have a title, we have uh, bullet points, we have uh, links. And so if we look at that rendered, you can see it's like a combination of everything. Oh, I have to actually go to the README. So, oh, this is a longer README, but this is the same thing. I have some links in there. Um, I have, oh, inline code blocks. So if we look at, you know, the, the code, we can see that I use the hash. The first one is heading one. The second one was heading two. I did my bulleted lists. You should really have a space, like an empty line in between those, but um, I don't. So uh, I would reject this as a, <laughs> as a commit. But um, here we used our 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 link formatting where we have the link text in the brackets followed by the actual url in parentheses down here we have the code block where we see the inline formatting where we have the back ticks before and after and then um, down here we have another um another uh uh, uh link so again, you know, it's a combination of all the things. We look at it rendered. There's our bulleted list. There's our headings. Heading one looks different than heading two. That it's, you know, for visual, you can tell that that's the most important item on the page. That's the, the page title. So a heading two would be, you know, um, following your outline. But again, we don't use them for style. We use them for semantic markup. We have our nice links and then we have our nice code blocks. So we'll just kind of look at everything again, just because that we can. Again, we can do italics, really straightforward, asterisk before and after. Um, bold is two asterisks um, or underscores before and after. Strike through is the tilde. And then our block quote was that caret in front. Headings, remember we can do them two different ways. We can do, you know, with the hashtags, heading one, heading two, heading three, each hashtag indicating another level of the heading. And then if you only have two headings, you can do the the title and then the 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 equal sign for heading one and then the 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 un, the hyphens for heading two and then our horizontal rule was three dash lines. So that's what I got for you. Um, if we go back to the slide deck, I don't think I have anything else in the slide deck, but let's just check real quick. Nope, that's it. And I have some resources at the end um, for. Um, Markdown guide getting started. And then I have a couple of different flavors here. I have common mark, you know, our common mark spec sheet, GitLab flavored um, markdown, and then also GitHub flavored markdown. So I'll just go back to the top and leave the URL there. And um, that way you all can see that. Are there any questions? Does someone want to see something demoed? And I'm relying on the chat on the side, so I'm not sure um, uh, where that would be. Let's go to Q&A. Oh, okay. So I had the wrong window open. I had the whole the whole the whole platform open. I do see some questions. Um, can you create a custom ordered list um, example using an arrow instead of a circle bullet? Not in Markdown necessarily. Like you can call that out and use a plugin, but normally it will just format with that with that circle bullet. And then there's a question that is not stupid. Um, WordPress and Drupal are different CMSs. Very true, but you can use Markdown everywhere. That's what makes it portable. Is if you have an editor that supports Markdown, you can use it. Um, not every editor supports it. You have. You know, I'm not sure how Gutenberg works, but I think that you can use certain styles of Markdown in there. Um, but again, there's a plugin that that has a Markdown editor in there. Um, and then someone requested access, so I will do that.
Okay. Let's, um, but I don't know how to reply. Okay, here, hit reply. And I think someone already did that, but there's the link um, for that. Any questions? Any more questions? Oh, what's a mermaid library? So that's just a, a like an API that calls out like how to how to format something. So we'll look at that again. Um, so what was that? That was. Flow charts, right? OK, so we'll look at this. Um, so mermaid is like naming a specific library. So Markdown has different libraries that it calls to. And so it just is calling from a, a library that supports this kind of Markdown. Um, not really important that you know what that means. It just means it's a it's a it's a resource that Markdown pulls from, and it's specific to GitLab, like I said. So you call the library, you call the graph data, and then you do your flowchart. So um, it's a like an API, I think, is what it's called. Again, beginner talk, so I am not completely sure, but that's a really good question. Still need access for the 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 the, the file. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. So there's access. Sorry about that. Cool. Enjoy WordCamp. Um, thank you very much for listening. And feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to like play around in that GitLab repository too because it's open so if you want to do something in there you can just edit the page and do a merge request and play around in there um i don't care i'll come back and i'll like change things feel free to like try to break things you know look go around and see like like what it means if you forget a space what it means if you like don't have a space you know because a lot of times um the muscle memory and markdown is coming from our mistakes you know we learn as we grow so um mistakes happens um so yeah feel free to do that Thank you.